Hello, do you want to know how to count data in Excel? If yes, then this video is for you. A lot of people know they can use count function in Excel to count cells, but there are several different count functions available and you might not know the subtle differences. In this lecture, we will go through following count functions. I'll see you there. Hello and welcome back friends. In today's lecture, we will learn about the count functions in Excel. As the name indicates, these functions help us count our data in various ways. To understand, let's assume this data set. It's the same data set which we used in our previous video. Let's say, first of all, I want to count how many orders are there in the above data. To do this, I can use the count function. The count function takes in array as an argument, or it can take individual cells as well. Since I want to count all the orders over here, I will pass in an ar array. Now I'll close the parentheses and it will give us 20. Now note that the count function only counts the numerical values. For example, if I apply the count function on this array and close the parentheses, it will give me zero because none of these values are numerical. If you want to count all the values irrespective of their type, you can use another function called count a. The count a functions will count all the non-blank or non-empty cells. And you get the same answer. Now let's just say that we want to count the blank cells, or let's assume this example where we are asked to count the number of orders where there is no mention of the city. In order to do that, I can use a count blank function. I'll take count blank and pass in the range. In this range, in this case, we want to select the city column. So I'll close the parentheses and it gives me zero because none of the orders have city as a blank. In order to further check my formula, I can try deleting a couple of cities. And as you can see, the value for the count blank function changes. If we want to do conditional counting, then that function is also available in Excel and it's called countif. It operates in the same way as some if or average if function, which we covered in our previous lecture. Let's take this example. We want to find out how many orders are there for furniture. In this case, I want to count the number of rows provided that a certain condition is met. And that condition is that I want to have furniture in the category column. Let's try to solve this problem with the count if function. The count if function takes in two arguments. The first argument is a range, which we want the formula to evaluate. So I'll pass in the category range or the range which contains the category values. And the second argument is the criteria, which we want Excel to use when evaluating whether the criteria is met or not. In this case, we want to pass in the value for furniture. So it gives us five. And if you want to cross check it, we can see that there are five counts of furniture in this data set. Now let's assume we want to count the data based on a multiple criteria. That can be achieved via the count if s function. Let's just say that we want to count how many orders for the furniture, or how many of the furniture orders are from South region. So in this case, we have two criteria. We want the category to be furniture and the region to be South. I can do that via count if s function. The count if s function will take in at least two arguments, but depending upon the criteria, it can be more. So if we have two criterions, then count if s function will take four arguments. The first argument is the range for the criteria one, which is in our case, the category. For the criteria, I will pass in furniture. The second criteria range is the region. So if the category matches furniture, then I want the formula to check whether the region matches South. And if it does match South, then I want Excel to count it in our calculation. So I'll pass in the criteria range two and the criteria two is South and it will count. So out of all the furniture orders, which are actually five, three of them are for the South region. Now you might be wondering what's the purpose of of these functions. The count functions are usually used together with the lookup functions like offset, for example. Later in the course, we will discuss the lookup functions as well. And over there, we will see how count functions 
can help us to keep our complicated formulas dynamic. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.